Okay, this is the first look at the new type of incubator I'm going to try this time. This is the NatureRite 360 and it's just slightly different than uh, my other Hovabaters over there that I'm, I've been using. Uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that uh, I was struggling with the, the chicks when they get to pipping. They pretty much shrink wrapped and died and I was losing quite a few of them that way so I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I know why that happens, but I didn't think I was causing that problem. So I'm just going to try out a different incubator and see how it goes. Um, I got eggs through eBay again, and I have my own eggs, and we're going to do eggs in the new Naturite and in the Hovabater over there. And we're going to see what the, how the results are. Okay, so let's take a quick look at this incubator. So one thing I do like about it is it's all plastic. It's no styrofoam. The downside to not being styrofoam is you can't do this in a very cold area. If you do, you're going to have to put a box around it or a towel over it, something to help uh, stabilize the temperature or from the temperature dropping because it just it won't work well in very cold climate or environment. Another thing I liked about it is it has external water. So you fill up your water right here. I've already put water in it. And then also just like the clear top so you can kind of see you know, you get a 360 view of all your chickens and your eggs in there. The downside to this is it's not very tall. So when the chicks hatch, I saw a video where they're just pretty much bumping into this gray thing up here on the top and there's not a lot of space in here for them. This holds 22 eggs and if you can imagine 22 hatched chickens in here all scurrying around, it's pretty chaotic. It also has a pretty nice little thing right here that you open up to control the humidity. It has a temperature gauge and a humidity gauge all built in. It counts down the 21 days which wasn't hugely important. It's a nice feature and it also has this right here is a candler so you turn it on right here and it's pretty bright because I almost bl blinded myself with it just now. So the lid just comes off. All right. So the egg turner powers from this here and it connects down into the bottom of the unit down here. So you just plug it in right there and it powers the egg turner. This is the egg turner. I imagine it just goes back and forth like this or it might spin around. I don't know yet. I haven't seen it work actually. And then this is holds the eggs and it just comes out. I'm trying to do this one handed here. Actually let me put this down. Okay so I got that piece off. And then you can see the water chamber in here. So chamber A is right here. You can see that there's water in here. And then chamber B, this is only, this cap is on here to keep the hot air from escaping out. But when you get to within three days, you take this off and you fill up chamber B, which is quite a bit larger to keep the humidity higher. It actually goes all the way around. That's chamber B. So it comes like that. You put your top on, or your base in here, I'm sorry. Oh man, getting it all messed up again. It's not difficult, I'm just trying to do it with one hand. That's all there is to it. There we go. So that's in there. And that's in there. And then there's a little tab, I don't know if you can see it, uh, right there. There's two, one on each side, right there on the inside. Or, I'm sorry, here they are, the little T-tabs right here. Right there, one there and one right here. And there's a corresponding little, shoot, you can't see it because it's clear plastic. Anyways, they're on the plastic and they just, they line up and they go in there. And it gives you a nice snug fit on your lid. So there we go. Comes with this power cable. It's pretty long. 
and then you just plug it in. There we go, it's fired up. You can see the temperature and humidity. And then if you turn this on, it gives you that bright egg handler. Alright, so we'll get a little bit more into it, but I just got it uh, preheating the water and the temperature inside because I'm getting ready to put the eggs in there. And we'll go from there. Alright, so you guys missed out on me placing the eggs in there. Uh, nothing real exciting happened. But I got all 22 eggs in there. And another thing that I forgot to mention that I like about this incubator is they lay flat. Instead of, you know, the fat end up and an egg turner, they're laying flat. And it's kind of like a more uh, natural how they would be in the nest. I don't know if that's going to affect the outcome or not. Um, but I'm just excited for this incubator. I hope it does a lot better than my hobobaters. But in the end, it's all about temperature and humidity. So we'll see uh, how it works out. And currently we're 92.5 and heating up and 59% humidity. Also, since I had more than 22 eggs, I went ahead and threw some eggs in my hovabator over here. And it's also coming up to temp. There's only five eggs in here. But um, I did uh, watch a video about somebody doing them dry, so not putting any water in. So these are gonna be a dry run. So just the incubator at temperature with five leftover eggs. And we're gonna see how that works out. We got our first first baby chicks. There's two in there. And we're at look at that hatch day. And then we got one pippin right there. And one right there. It's looking good. So I wanted to show you guys this. I thought by leaving in the rotation rack, it would hold the eggs in place. Because when they start to hatch, they start to kick and roll around and they're pretty much pushing the eggs all around the incubator. So I left it in there. But what I'm noticing now is that the chicken is actually pressed up between the egg and the wall and it's having a hard time just getting out. So I'm not sure if leaving the, that divider you know the white uh, divider right here to hold the eggs in place was necessarily a good idea. But we'll we'll find out. All right, so the chickens hatched. You can see them in there. We got seven so far, and they're looking ready to get out. But there's 22 eggs total, so you can see this is my only pet peeve with this Nature Right 360. It's a cool little incubator. It's easy to use, but I just think that there's not enough space if you're gonna fill this up with 22 eggs. I mean, they're just walking all over the other, the other chicks, but definitely like it. So far, seven. Now, I did a little non-scientific experiment. I have three incubators going. So this one over here, it's my Hovabator 2370. And this was a dry run. No water, absolutely no water at all. Not during the incubation process, lockdown. And if you can see in there, you can see with that reflection, I don't know. But we had one hatch. I put only five eggs in and one is hatched so far. And then I have another Hova Vader 2370 over here. I did this one normal. This has quite a few more eggs in here, and uh, I think it was a day or two behind the rest of them. And this one had 50% uh, humidity in here for the whole incubation process, and it's up to 70 plus for the lockdown period. And nobody's hatched out of here yet. 
So we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. But yeah, this is a cool little incubator. I've never had to open this or take this top off because you can feel the water from the side right here. And it keeps track of everything. And I left the turner in there. I think I said it before, which it stops rotating. So I don't think I'm trying to get my finger. That's so funny. And then, of course, the temperature and the humidity. So a good little incubator. All right, hey everyone. So today I officially ended the not so scientific uh, incubator trial experiment. Um, these guys here, unfortunately, are not going to hatch. So two, four, six, eight, nine. This one was my egg. This one was my egg. The red marks were my eggs. So yeah, so I bought, I got 15 eggs from eBay, uh, light Sussex. So these are the only ones, two, four, five out of 15 did not hatch. Um, that's pretty good, uh, especially for eBay eggs with shipping and all that, um, very good. Everything else that you, that's not here was infertile, didn't even have a chance from the get-go and they were mostly my eggs. So if you remember um, from the experiment, I had 22 eggs in here, 15 of them were from eBay, eight of them hatched, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, so maybe more of them didn't hatch, but eight, we got eight hatched total. I had two other Hovabater incubators. One was running dry, one was running with water and humidity. Interestingly enough, I had, I think, like 20 something eggs in the one with water in it, nothing hatched. Um, I think there was two fertile, and the rest were infertile. So I don't, I guess my roosters just are, uh, on vacation, midlife crisis, I don't really know what's going on with them. So most of my eggs were infertile. So two were fertile, they didn't hatch. I've had them in here for an additional four days, nothing going on with them. The dry incubator had six eggs in it, no water whatsoever during incubation or lockdown, nothing. And one of them hatched, surprisingly enough. I cannot believe it. I've been struggling with humidity problems and eggs, uh, you know, not completing the, you know, the unzipping process and, and hatching and dying in the middle of that. Thought it was humidity. Now I'm second guessing that. I'm not sure. Um, basically what happened was I was looking at reviews on this incubator here and somebody said they did a dry hatch on a different one and got a 100% hatch rate. And I'm like, what? That don't make no sense. I, I'm struggling to keep humidity up and you're hatching 100% on dry. So I did six eggs. Out of those six eggs, an additional two were fertile, uh, the other three were infertile. So uh, yeah, I would say that the dry incubation process worked just as good as the humid one. Um, but non-scientific kit, scientific kit, what is that? It was non-scientific and I'm surprised to get one hatch. So I'm gonna run that experiment again in March when I do another uh, batch of eggs and we're going to do a dry incubator and a moist incubator and we're going to see how, how it works out. Hopefully um, come springtime the roosters will be a little bit more um, caring to the girls and uh, we'll have some more a better hatch rate. But anyways, yeah, um, hope you enjoyed it and this Nietzsche Wright 360 incubator, um, I really like it. I like it a lot. I don't have hardly anything to do except add water. It's got all the bells and whistles on it that you need. Again, I just uh, wish it was a little bit bigger, had more room for the chicks, but I um, I like this a lot better than the Hova Bader. Um, but they both hatch eggs, they both do a great job. And um, yeah, so stay tuned. In March, I'm gonna do another one, wet, dry, Nurture Right 360 and Hova Baiters, and we're gonna see how, how it goes. Hopefully we'll have a lot better results. All the eggs will be from the same place, so there won't be no difference. There won't be eBay eggs, there won't be, it, they'll all be the same, and we'll just see which incubators and which process outperform the others. So if you like this kind of content, you like this stuff, please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for March and my next egg hatching video. Thank you. Just a quick update on the little chicks. 
they're doing fine in the new chicken brooder outside in the garage not in the house in a Tupperware bin Hoo -hoo. so a couple days old now they're looking good they've gone through a whole container of food just about already and almost all of their water so I'm gonna have to replace that all right just want to give you a quick update thanks